yeah, Francis has just been so enjoying, I think, working with you in lockdown. And uh, I think y you probably, well, it'd be lovely to talk, talk to you about how you got to know her, because I think you guys didn't know each other before, did you? Uh, not at all. It was lockdown, and actually I'd had a quite a difficult time because a very close friend had died, and then I got sick, and then a young woman who I know had been attacked by her family, and I took her in, so it was all a bit sort of bleak, really. And I got an email from a friend saying that Susie Orbach and Francis were due to do a talk at the Freud Museum, which had been <clears throat> either cancelled or postponed. And what about filming a conversation between them? So I looked Francis up online and I, you know, I really did no research because I thought, well, it'd be quite interesting to go in and just for it to be an adventure. And, um, and I just had a sense of her work, that's it. And then Francis sent me the keys to her studio because she was isolating. And my friend Leo, who has a, a camera and I, just turned up at the studio. And so opened the door and went in and there was this sort of explosion of colour and energy that was really sort of like a jolt, really. And so on the one hand, there were these paintings that were very, very colourful. And on the other hand, the, the, these, which she calls her heads, you know, which are kind of like peeling away the mask of when everything is all right and people look completely kind of <laughs> distraught, which is a little bit how I think a lot of us were feeling at that time. So it was going in and I found it, you know, seeing kind of what I feel a lot of people are feeling this time of uncertainty and so on. And on the other hand, this kind of energy really. So I was immediately kind of drawn in really from 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 that point and it was it was a lovely way to start you know with a she great wasn't there at all so she literally sent you the keys i mean how how amazing really to have that experience um very trusting yeah. of her as well but obviously it's you so you know but um yeah. i mean i guess there was you know i met susie all back a couple of times we don't know each other well at all and then we have a mutual friend so i suppose that was a bit of a a sort of, I don't know, insurance for Francis, but I don't think she was thinking that way. We talked on the phone and I think yeah. she just decided to trust me. Yeah. And it was only afterwards you just think, <laughs> that was quite a thing to do, you know, because <laughs> I, you know, Leo and I were in there just thinking, I felt like a thief, you know, as if we were sort of sneaking around somewhere we weren't really allowed to be in. And then I called Francis actually from the studio. We yeah. spoke, I put her on the speakerphone. Yeah. Um, and I think very strange for her because to have somebody looking at something, so obviously paintings are made to be seen and they're public, but studio is the private space. And to have somebody in there without her there to mediate or seeing how we were going to react or I suppose I could have been some kind of lunatic that decided to go around smashing things up or stealing all the paintings I don't know it was uh, as you say a great leap of faith really and then and so you met her on the telephone so you kind of met her because you met her work and you met her energy before you met her which is a really extraordinary way yeah. in a way but I, I suppose that's for contemporary artists, I suppose that is how a lot of people encounter the work. They encounter the work before they, they encounter the person, but it's, it was almost more extreme for you because you had her there on the telephone in her space, so you're absolutely surrounded by her energy. Um, so when did you actually then meet her physically? Well, not for about six weeks, I think. Oh, wow. So we decided that initially I said, I'll just make you a little 10 minute film, but then it kind of grew as I became more and more interested. And we made a sort of long film in, I, in what I felt was the way that she makes her paintings, which is, I mean, there's a lot of, I think she prefers the word struggle to labor because labor sounds a bit like you're sort of soldiering on, but this, it's not that they're, easy to make or that there's no kind of craft or endeavor behind them because 
there is mm -hmm. but that somehow she does it each time she sort of leaps into the unknown she hasn't got a drawing or she's not they're not figurative paintings mm -hmm. so it somehow has to come from the inside and um I, that was kind of how I decided to carry on with the film so I started to meet people who she was suggesting on their doorsteps we weren't allowed to go into anybody's house so the only place I actually went into was her studio but of course she wasn't there so gradually sort of began to kind of build up a picture of who she was through these people who knew her um, so it was it was very interesting for as a filmmaker it's not you know normally you'd research things and you do things in a much more conventional way but it was such a crazy time that making work in in that way seemed to make perfect sense somehow so you got to know her firstly through her basically through her absence through her through her work through her energy um yeah. and you had this communication over the telephone and then you got to know her through her through her friendships and the people who were important to her on their doorsteps i mean you, yeah. you couldn't write it could you <laughs> It really is only these sets of yeah. circumstances. It was only through her work, though. But you know, when we go to the National Gallery, you mm. you can't meet most. Well, any right. of those people really because they've all they're all dead. So you are yeah. encountering them through their work. And Absolutely. I guess with painting, I love looking at paintings. So in that sense, she was lucky that the person who had suggested somebody who actually. Mm. loves paintings even though I haven't got a track record making films about art at all you know um, and it's always an encounter isn't it that somehow the painting comes towards you and you move towards it and if you can't move the painting is just on the wall and it says nothing you know Absolutely. somehow yeah. something happens it, it's a kind of conversation with the work as well as with the artists and Francis was initially very resistant to the idea that her work had any meaning at all so she kept saying it doesn't mean anything it's just paint <laughs> and yeah. you just think well these are very powerful paintings of course they mean something yeah. <laughs> but she wasn't um, she wasn't prepared to go along with that for a long long time actually it took it took a long time before she actually trusted me you know mm -hmm. to to somehow you know there's no easy connection between somebody's life and their history and the way they make work you know it's it's a lot of people have experiences of you know she had a very overbearing quite sadistic father but many people have that. Mm. and they don't they're not artists and they don't make work but somehow it kind of informs the, the work that you do you know the, the, the life that you have and mm. And I was particularly interested in the fact that she's a woman, you know, and, and that she she graduated at the time of the, the YBAs when painting wasn't fashionable, I suppose, you know. And and it's never easy to be a woman artist. It's not easy to take yourself seriously and it's not easy for other people to take you seriously. So I have really huge admiration for her that she's kind of persevered, you know, in, in that context. Absolutely. I, I get the impression that it's, um, well, not only is it a vocation, it's just, it's just, it has to be for Francis. You know, there's no, she could not be anything other than a painter. And I think it was in the video with, um, uh, with Susie where she says, you know, she, she just inhabits the world of paint. It's on her taps, it's on everything. And she sees the world through, through paint. It's a very sort of yeah. physical relationship. And I think that comes out through her painting. Um, and it's interesting what you're saying about, you know, not wanting to have her work interpreted or um, sort, of, sort of talk about it in that way at all. Because I think there is so much that could be inferred when you look at it, especially with the heads. And um, I think that it was the painting um, which was called Smile, which intrigued you. Um, and it is an intriguing work, in particular, the way Francis talks about the fact that it just emerged you know it wasn't a preconceived idea um no i was really surprised because i think usually well certainly but you know with the drawing the drawing is what it is and she can't layer it and keep changing it but when she talked about smiles she said that it was initially uh, going to be an abstract painting and then something else emerged out of it but and that i suppose with any kind of creative project there's 
some terror involved. I, I mean, she doesn't talk about that, but I certainly feel it because if you're le going into somewhere and you don't know what you're doing, it's really frightening. I mean, even saying that now, I get <laughs> chills out the back of my legs because, you know, what are you really doing? I completely agree that it does look terrifying, but, you know, she seems in a way up for the challenge. You know, I think that's what's really impressive. It's like she's up for the challenge day in, day out, and it must be exhausting. Um, I mean, that's that's my feeling. I think, you know, she puts clearly so much energy and commitment into every single work. Um, and I loved the sort of the last line of your short film where you said uh, you got her, you know, um, sort of sitting in that chair and she says, you know, if you get stuck, you're going to get stuck at the same point. And I thought that was very interesting. And, you know, you, you can't just like step away. You've got to fight your way out of it. Yeah. And, and that made me think, you know, I suppose, you know, I'm almost answering my question, but what, what can we learn, you know, from Frances and her work? I thought it would be quite interesting to have your thoughts on that. Well, I think it is that, you know, that, I mean, particularly for women, and I, you know, a lot of young women sometimes, you know, approach me and say, how do you get to be a filmmaker or an artist? And, and actually, you have to, you have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and and the, that sounds incredibly simplistic, and of course it is, you know, but it's like really giving yourself that permission to, to, to go into that space and make the work. And that's all you have, really, because if, if you're sort of depending on somebody coming along and saying, oh, you're very good at what you do, you know, why don't you, you know, why don't you paint, why don't you do this, why don't you, and somehow... That, then that permission is going to make it possible for you to make it work. You're never going to do it. You yeah. have to, it has to kind of come from the inside. And that sort of compulsion that Francis has. And also to make those huge paintings. So when we went in the last time, and there's this, wow, it's really blown away, absolutely fantastic six by yeah. six and a half foot painting. And yeah. you think she's making that painting and there isn't a market for it at the moment as far as I can see you know yeah. and so much of kind of contemporary art has been commodified to within an inch of its life to where it becomes completely empty mm. and and her work is not about that you know it is about the work and I I really hope that that she finds you know that it finds its place in the world I'm sure it will but yeah. actually to make it without thinking in that way you know it's how am I going to make money out of it or how who is going to like this or is it going to fit on someone's wall or does it fit in with their sofas or whatever I, I think that's it really brave and I, I think courage is the main thing really Absolutely. even if you're a very fearful person you know she's very afraid of the virus and so on you know so that fearfulness is balanced by this sort of enormous courage I think. I think that's very insightful actually yes she has been um, I don't think she'll be ashamed to admit she was very scared at the beginning of lockdown and she says so in the film she was frightened you know yeah. and quite rightly you know it was a fright it was a frightening time I think a lot of us didn't know what we were facing and but then she's she, she's also courageous and I think the work shows an enormous sense of courage um, and, and that's in particular why I wanted to show some of the really large works in this exhibition, because I felt like they, you know, stood up to who she is as an artist and that they needed to be seen. Um, Redhead in particular um, actually um, wouldn't get into the gallery. It's in the catalogue. <laughs> um, and the other work had to be um, hoisted up on the outside and come in through the window. Um, we, we do like a challenge. Um, but again, I felt, felt like it was really important that they're seen and that we, again, don't commodify it even though we are a commercial gallery and we'd want people to obviously buy her work but we wanted to people to see you know the real Francis you know and I think that's also what's been so wonderful about you know you going in there with the videos it's, it's given us a, a new insight to Francis and at a quite a vulnerable time um, but also it's a sort of story of um, overcoming your fears because I think through lockdown she she grew didn't she and um, became more fearless and found more solace through her, through her work. So I don't know if you have been back or noticed a change from sort of the first time you met her, if you've been back into the studio more recently. Well, I, I think the last time I went was when we made the, the little fragmented okay. yeah. the gallery show. And there was all this new work there and it did feel like there had been this kind of new surge of 
ideas really and I think one of the things sorry to go back to yeah. to the show that really surprised me is, is the gallery is small yeah and I'm thinking, how are these big paintings going to look in this small space? And actually they looked amazing. And that really surprised me because actually they, they're they big, but somehow, you know, Smile is a really big painting on a wall with some other things around it. And somehow it didn't unbalance the room at all. So I, I can't really explain how that happened. Well, we just put Smile next to Night. So we just had the two sort of equally powerful but um, different palettes I suppose so they didn't compete with each other but they stood up to each other and I think that was kind of the concept there and then we had the more minimal the drawings which I I love actually because she says with the drawings um, so much with so little and I think they're really very special and so we had those um, across another another wall in the gallery so it was trying to get the balance um, but I, I, I think I mean if we can talk about the drawings a little bit I love the way she um, you know they're so minimalist again and it's about sort of stopping and not putting too much in and they're sort of they're so opposite to the paintings not that she puts too much in but with the paintings there's more of a fight whereas I feel like with the drawings I don't know maybe she kind of is is freer and somehow happy just to have a uh, to let go I don't know what's your perception so she says she has a very high failure rate with with the drawings yeah, And what I think that means is that she has to throw a lot of them away because either they work or they don't. You can't just carry on, you know, like in with the paintings, with yeah. night. It's about the ghosts of other paintings that, that kind of didn't work and that she was then layering up until finally she got something that looks as if it was just made like that, but actually took a very long time. And there was, yeah. and I think with the paintings, it's really catching something quite ephemeral mm. and just being there in that moment of, of kind of grace really and and I think on each side of each drawing is probably a lot of drawings that yeah. haven't worked. I think well it's definitely got to be challenging you know when Francis in the video was saying how um, I think it was an argument with Susie about um, if work looks too nice she's not interested at all. And uh, she was quite cross about that, but I could see both sides of the argument. I think, um, but you, you definitely do want something challenging. Definitely, because I think otherwise we're just sort of skimming around on the surface and that somehow when you're confronted with things that are painful and difficult, um, it's, there's something deeply kind of reassuring about that because you think I'm not the only person that feels these things and so you feel I feel that I'm part of a community of people who are not just enjoying the lovely things in life which of course we do but also being able to look at things that are really difficult and as she says fight your way out of it she paints in a very kind of confrontational and challenging way but she paints like a bloke because she's not directly autobiographical, you know, she's not talking about um, periods and abortions and relationships and things. And, and it's fine that women artists, that some women artists do that. And it's great to see them. I remember being very moved by Mary Kelly many, many years ago, you know, having a son's nappies on the wall and thinking, <laughs> yeah, you can make art out of the everyday and about our lives in a way that is meaningful and can live in the gallery context and can have yeah. that kind of conversation. Yeah. But I think with Francis, it's not what she's doing. Yeah. And, and I think that makes it harder for her as well because, because she's, she's kind of painting like a man, you know? Right. And, Debunking her gender, totally. I mean, I think, you know, her work's very much like Frank Alba. Yeah. You know, it's unusual to see a woman working in, in that way, but it's not about being feminine. It's about, you know, this interaction with the paint and the, the sort of visceral qualities of it and having that kind of daily kind of fight with it in a, in a good way, which we perhaps more associate with a, with a male painter than a, than a female painter yeah. to this point. Yeah, it's not yeah. kind of, let me just do this at my kitchen table. I mean, she's yeah. lucky she always says that you know yeah. that she has a big studio and she has you know the resources to make big paintings but mm. that's what she does and yeah. uh, I find that again it's it's great to see women doing this thing yeah. it's brave and ambitious and all the things that we want for the future isn't it